Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Royal Grown Radio. I'm Michael Beck. I'm Rick Elliott. And we are here today at Ridgeline Farms joined by Jason Gelman. He's got us here at the farm to check out all of the fantastic flavors, Emerald Cup winning cannabis strains, high above the town of Garberville, on the hills, on the ridgeline. Thanks so much for having us, Jason. Oh man, I'm stoked to finally get you guys up here. Man, right? we've been talking about Jeez, this for a couple I years know. now, so yeah, yeah we're doing yeah. it. I love it. You know, it's obviously we love the soil. We love, you know, it's you guys always have a family vibe. So, you know, I mean, you've been up there, my uncle's store many times. Yep. You know, so yeah, this is the hill basically I was raised on, you know, and I wouldn't say right here, probably 11 miles up the hill, but been right here for about 16, 17 years. And um, yeah, just it's climate of its own from good to bad, you know? I mean- <laughs> A little bit of everything. We yeah, a time. little of everything. We get a lot of wind, we get cold, we get hot. I mean, but as you guys know, um, you know, that makes for special buds when they get this nice warm days and these cold nights. And I mean, that's- Absolutely. That's the humble magic. And some of that wind too, you know, it'll actually, it'll strengthen up the structure of your plants, obviously to hold bigger flower. Yeah, yeah. You know, as long as it's not breaking things in the process. I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where we're just sitting here. It's like, these are just the personals. And like I said, it's for me, this is how I used to grow weed, you know, just yeah. down a hill. I mean, obviously we'd probably hike down a hill and it's a little more hidden, yep, totally. but it's the same type of concept, right? And mm. so, you know, you go and you see a lot of fields of weed and stuff like that. It's amazing, but I really enjoy it. It's just peaceful watering your nice full-term plants, seeing what they do and looking at, yep. you know, looking at the mountains, looking at the area I grew up in. It's so rootsy with the classic boxes tucked right into the hillside where you can like get that natural terroir, but you also have like kind of a vestibule to put the fertilizers in to do your magic and keep yep. it kind of contained. Right into the ground, you know? Yeah. Those ones do, they seem to do the best when you just actually plant right into the ground. Yeah, I've that, done the smart pots, I've done all that. They still the, get root bound. Yeah, they get root bound. This allows you to kind of control the temperature of the root definitely, zone a little bit better too. Yeah. Yeah, well, we could yeah, uh, walk beautiful. down to the farm. Beautiful huh? up here. Let's this do it. This is a view, but We'll show you another view. Show us around. Let's yeah, we got it. the storms coming in, so we're right up coming into harvest. So we're really excited to be here at this time and really get the like full scope of the vibe here. Thanks so I much. I mean, this is the timing. What well, it's like, I think Sunday we have weather coming in. So always that end of September. I think the first day of fall, right? Is this yep. first day of fall right now. Oh wow! So, I think yeah. tomorrow, today, or tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't yeah. even process that yeah, today. So you can feel it. You can. The, you know? It's shifting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Ready? A little a walk. I swear it's like, like I said, the evening is when I really love being at the farm. The buds tighten up. Everything kind of tightens up, you know? Um, we'll see. It'll still be beautiful. It'll still be beautiful now. I really appreciate the fact that you live here at the farm, cultivating it. It's that community vibe. Like you said, this is where you grew up. This is your home. Mm -hmm. And like, that's a big part of what resonates to me about this community. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, it's, um, this is my home. And, you know, a lot of people these days, you know, that are just jumping into this game, they, they, they could do their other jobs or they could go, you know what I mean? They could go back to carpentry or go back to electrician or whatever they're doing. But it's like, this is what we've been doing our whole life. Right. So there's no, this isn't going to work. Like I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it work. And I think a lot of the advantage that I've had is staying small, staying manageable, um, not having a bunch of workers, actually just working your butt off and, you know, and, I've always kind of said, like, you know, my, my dad, as you know, Crow, my Uncle Rob, my mom, Asha, they all, they, they're all amazing craftsmen. And I never really had it. I was like, what's my craft? My, you know, my handwriting sucks. <laughs> you know, I can't build shit. I can build beds. And uh, it was nice when I realized this is my craft. You it's know? a calling for certain this people. This is. This is my art, you know, and it's like... Yeah. You know, I like that you say that there's, there is no fallback. This is the fallback. Oh yeah. So what we're doing here, we have basically the, these are the ones that are latest. 
Um, these are probably, you know, three weeks behind and as we go, they get closer. So this is Skittles. These are, these are straight original Skittles right here. I'll walk you around and then come you around the, the back because there's other strains mixed in and all these, I, I have a lot of strains. So what are you up to? Do you have a, a I mean, I, there were, there were 22 in here round one and now I'm down to like, I don't know, 15 or something. Um, it's not bad though. It's no, bad. we'll it's see a lot. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people you're killing it. You know, you're, you're killing it. You're doing this. And it's like, you probably make more money growing just the whole thing. One hedge, one strain that, that works sure. in your climate. But for me, that's, there's no fun in that. And it's not, yeah. you know, I want to make strains. I want to see what new plants do. I want to see how they, they act, they smell. And, you know, it keeps the, the enjoyment. It keeps, you know. Yeah. Monocropping is not the connoisseur way. And you can really tell when you get onto a farm and you're like, yeah, I've got 18, 22 strains. I'm breeding my own. I'm working towards this specifically for this place. There's a different level of attention and inter interaction with the plant. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I honestly feel that, you know, making our own strains and, you know, coming up with new things, not just that, you know, that purple cookie cutter weed yeah. that everybody could buy. You know, it's like we have these fresh new strains and that's that's what was going to separate us from all these other, you know, companies, you yeah. know, and it's like people like you guys are helping spread this knowledge. And I mean, it's so important yeah, because this is our culture, that. you know, this is, is literally, this is our culture depends on this succeeding, you know? I will say so that. So you guys feel free to smell stuff, whatever, you know, it's just don't, Love the don't smash them to smell. You know, the thing is for me is I, I want it clean. You look around, it's like, I don't want garbage. I don't oh, yeah. want, you smell know, the first just, thing is I know, you know this, is my, up, this is my backyard, mm -hmm. you know? So, so we have Skittles here and that back section is it's a lemon lavender times Skittles. It's a, it's, just amazing smell I'll this skittles is incredibly spicy and tangy like that's the oh, one it's, it's healthy it's a healthy it looks good it's gonna you know with skittles you like to cut it it's not like the prettiest one but you cut it a little earlier and it tastes way better this is a amf um we got it from cookies adios motherfucker excuse the french <laughs> all right that's that's what it is you know and i tell people names i always look at you like I'm, I'm gonna make up all the names. I make up some, but is it like a 35 percenter or something like that? It's, I mean, it's a biscotti sherb times jealousy. Mm -hmm. um, it's sick. really close to biscotti sherb though, so I don't know. A lot, of, a, lot, a lot of times there's names, but yeah, strain, you know, people like to switch names on strains. It doesn't have that jealousy gas as much as like the biscotti. No, style. I mean this. This is oh, this is gassy. Yeah, this okay, is way gassy. Jealousy to me wasn't that gassy. I, I mean, grew it last year. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't either. It, yeah, it came up I mean, really strong. Know, I do. This is the one I really like though, and you know, I get a lot of these strains, and I just it's they're gone. They look really know. happy though, for me. Man, for me, the day. plants have to. I mean, they got to smell good, they got to grow good and look good, but they have to smoke good. It's one it's of the most important really, thing. It's got a great nose to it. It really does. Okay, so we're move on over, and this is the Lance. Both of these are Lance. So this is your proprietary This genetic. is it, man. This is, which, uh, which what's kind of cool right now is I'll be able to show you what strains I crossed to make this strain. Um, nice. That's yeah, this, this is, this is the current em Emerald Cup champion. This is it, you know, and it's, you guys got to see it. Do you see it? At, we did it. So, so at Rising Source, all yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's a mixed light version. And the craziest thing about this strain is sun grown tastes different than mixed light. Indoor tastes different. They all taste different. Sure. Different turp profile every time. Yep. But it's just, oh God, it's, it's yeah, it's incredible. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty, and they stack really it's nicely. pretty amazing to come up with a strain it took about four years doing crosses with my dad yep. and that actually fits in this market because this market is very just it's it's uptight <laughs> it's hard it's hard it's to battle fickle. you made quite I mean, a splash with this one you know and, and it was like i remember i told a lot of people watch out you'll yeah. see you'll see what lance does you will see and it's uh i didn't really know it's gonna go as far as it did but it's it's special and not only does it have the nose and the the taste it just when you when you the blowout is you taste a whole different expression every time you smoke it I great high too totally agree and when we smoked it down with oliver he brought out some nugs after we got to you know tour the greenhouses and right away rick and i were both like whoa this is the winner like I mean, this the and morning, this is long before the cup smoke a joint go to the gym 
like you feel great. You nice. sit in there, it says certain strains will do that, you know, and certain ones will knock you on your butt. Like we have this one here. Yeah. This is bringing back, which I finally got it back from a friend. This was the Lambo OG, which I won a lot of awards with back in the days. And I'm like, I want to grow OG again. So that's a stacky OG. I bro. mean, this yeah, is the thing is if you've grown OG, you know, the last two weeks is when it does its thing. That's when oh, the hairs man. go in, the pods come out. So. Starts dropping. Yeah. And so we're, I mean, this has three weeks. I mean, these aren't even on, this, this is like week seven, you know, so maybe even six and a half. So um, just far enough from finish to weather these storms that are coming through, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm going to be covering up. These three hoops are getting covered. They're going to have to go through it, you know? Um, so then we, we move over here. This is the hardest one to grow on this hill. This is the Green Lantern. And this is, so this is the main cross that's in the Lance. Um, I mean, you can just look at it. it it's a really hardy plant. It's, it's, it, it doesn't like the cold. So like round one, it won't grow up here. I mean, it, you can see it doesn't get huge. Just about as, you know, kind of as big as it gets every once in a while. I give it to my friend down, um, you know, in the valley and his will get like this big. But really? up here, it just kind of hardens. And, you know, I won the Golden, Tur or Golden Tarps Awards with this thing in 2017 for like 38% THC. Wow. I mean, it's incredible. It's one of the strongest ones I've ever smoked. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. It's like a hairless so, wonder too. You right? see all the pistols curl back into it's the different. calyxes. It's different. When you smoke it, there's not, there's not a lot of terps. Um, you know, it's not a fruity. It's, it's more like, I, I compare it to like black coffee. You okay. Know? It's like, it's just strong. Pure. Just pure. Yeah. No, it's, it's a special one. So yeah, we cross, this is one of the main ingredients for the lance right there, you know? And so you, this was the female, the primary female that you bred into. So I had, we had a, a green lantern with an unknown for the first seed, right? So I didn't okay. know it was some body blah, whatever. So pop that and then, then we, we bred that into the straight green lantern clone that we had. Right. Back into it yeah, to so stabilize. Yeah, I had the seeds because I had to get it turned in. I didn't, I, I've never been the one to use, I know the silver water, or, you know, do all that and actually, you know, feminize your plant. I've never done that. We're old schools can be, yeah. you know. And so the only way to get, you know, this going was, you know, my buddy had some seeds that were part Green Lantern and something else. So we crossed that back into Green Lantern and we did that twice. Two years we did that until we got more of a solid Green Lantern. Sure. And then, yeah, from... One of those, we did a Green Lantern into the ICC, we called Ice Lantern. And then we, we crossed that one into the Ridgeline Runts. So it's mostly Green Lantern and Ridgeline Runts is what's like the, probably about 80% of it. And yeah, you can kind of, you can see, you'll see the difference than when you see these Runts over here. But is the Runts the next row over? No, this is actually Grape Gas. Oh, sweet. Which, this is what I'm doing the oil collab right now with Arcade of Fire. Oh, nice. And those yeah. guys do such amazing Which work. Which this is, you know, this is a strain that I wasn't sure. I mean, round one, it was small. I feel like it's it's got the look. It's, I mean, it smells like grapes. Oh man, it's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good one. I'm not saying I'm gonna grow it again it up really here, but. It does, man. It's yeah, got it's, that, oh, when you. It's got that great punch in the face. It's like Welch's grape jam. Oh, the guy I got dude. it from gave me the, a bag of it dried. And wow. you open up dry and it smells like grapes. It, yeah. It'll blow your mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing is the one. It you really so, is. It's like that old grape. I mean, the cool thing, it didn't do good round one, but it killed it on the rosin. So yeah. for the fresh frozen. So now I don't, I didn't have that in my, you know, my bag of tricks. I had no, no rosin. So now yeah. all of a sudden we have nice. that. And he's actually coming here. Uh, Lizondo is coming up on Saturday to do, uh, the Lance, which he said was the best so far. It gave out like the most rosin out of anything he's pressed. So I don't know anything about rosin uh, and stuff. I'm not gonna act like I do. It's not my department. Anyways, right. this is, so Nat gives me, a, from Humble Seed, gives yep. me a few randoms every year. And you know, like he gave me six this year. I weed through them round one. I kind of see what I like and plant a few. This one obviously stuck out to me, you know? And obviously it's gorgeous. It, the, yeah. One of the craziest things it about this solid. one here is that there's no purple on the leaves. Nothing. It's, no, it's just the it's bud. Complete flower. It's, man. Uh, it's not a big one. I mean, maybe it'll still swell here, 
There's like we, no leaf. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. And it's a purple GMO. And um, last night I came up with the name Nightlife. <laughs> so talked like to Nat, it. we've been looking for names and I'm like, you know, it really, I had Eric Nugshot over here taking pictures of it and he had it all trimmed up and it was all spiky. And I was like, it kind of gave me like a techno -y look. Like, I don't know. I'm like, that looks like something like that. And I'm like, techno thinking about clubs. Yeah. At night, and I'm like, oh, nightlife. Yeah. I mean, it's night. It's it's dark. It's dark, dude. You know, and it so, sparkles fantastically, like a disco ball. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this that's is, great, man. I like the name. Yeah, it's very I mean, fitting. Wow, what a beautiful flower. It is beautiful, you know. Yeah. And it's so. I, so the cool thing with my dad right now is all these strains you see here. I'm crossing with Lance this year. Every single one of these. So I'm gonna have a pheno hunt that's gonna. Be amazing and exciting and drive me crazy. Yep. Stacking up some winners. So though, bro. much work. <laughs> so look at this. So here now, so these are all behind a little. These are ones we're covering up. They're gonna make it through the rain. These okay. are going down Saturday. This is Lance as well. You can see ahead of that. Mm -hmm. Look at what this thing does. It just puts on. Look at the size of these calyxes. Dude, they're huge. Yeah, it's just. It's, they're just like vomiting even bigger calyxes out of each other. It's crazy, huh? It's just, yeah. it's just, you know, I mean, there's difference too. This was, this got a week of 100 degree weather, which, you know, the heat makes stuff go. Um, so the cool thing here is this year I started six more phenos of Lance. Same seed, same bud, you know, and they're all completely different. I kept this one, which we're calling Lanzilla. And if you look at it, it's more has a green lantern look, right? It's a little spikier. Mm -hmm. It's taller a little bit, but it's just a beautiful plant. I mean, it is just like. And again, the, the hairs kind of curl in, not quite as much, but they, they curl in like that. I mean, yeah, these, I mean, you guys could walk in here a little too. Check this out. I mean, it's, yeah, this stuff's doing it. Wow. It's kind of, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to, because this is the original. You know, Lance bat battling PM up here always. That's part of a farmer. Yep, sure is. You know, yeah. <laughs> you got to fight all the yep. elements up here at the weather. Like I said, the other day I woke up, it was almost raining here. Everything was wet. Yep. No. But yeah, I mean. Yeah, when things are lit this this far ahead. I mean, yeah, it's, here. Well, but you're getting to the finish line. Let's keep walking through this way yeah. and then I can bring you over the side before I go show you the monster mm. up there. Yeah, these... Uh, these buds are huge. They're, you know, it's, I'm, I'm really liking the Lanzilla. It's a little different. It's, uh, you know, the smell's different. I got to smoke some already and. It's, Strikingly it's just, it's consistent. So, it's so crazy that when you pop seeds, like I had other phenos that came out that are just completely different plants, you know? But it's like this one here. This one caught my eye, you know, it just, it's just a beautiful plant. Well, look how similar, it's not, not just a perfect canopy, but like one nug to the next, the shape is just like all the same. The structure is all the same. It's not like- and You love that view. So it's just, you know, you got, oh, I mean, this man. is, having smaller farms like this is, you enjoy it. I'm down here every yep. day. You work on it, you know your plants. It's. Well, it says a lot about, you know, the fact that you've been doing this your entire life, or at least been around it your oh, whole life. And you can time. still look at that and say, man, this just excites me. Well, this, it, it, this, this time know? of the year is the exciting time. Round one is it's kind of like, <laughs> oh, my. like when, when, when round one, the buds are small and people come here, they're like, why are those buds so small? I thought you were Why are those buds so small? Yeah, and you're just like, get out of here. You know what I mean? And it, it's, 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 there's lots of struggles in farming and, you know, social media you only see the best yeah and that's not reality it's a curated know? profile it's, exactly it's just not reality but unless you're here tell you farm, what, patrick he would always put out his worst just yeah to show <laughs> well i mean i give it i give it the best like i give it all the energy i could give it and you know it's like me and one other person down here and that's it yeah and you know so when a lot of people are like you know your brand's killing it this and that well you know what it's not, not, there's no killing it these days at all. It's hard to even make money, but I do make a living because I don't have a ton of employees. You know, sure. I don't have tons of overhead. I work hard, and you know, and I, I'm down here all the time. Make sure everything's good. Yep. If you have good weed like this, it's gonna sell. Yep. If well, you have fields and fields and tons of workers, and your stuff's moldy and crappy, and you're gonna bankrupt. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it's well, simple. And you're gonna and you're gonna screw the market. And nobody's gonna have the passion like you do. If you're sitting up in the house in the office doing all this other shit and farming out all the work and not down here yourself, you you lose that connection and yes. like that's one thing we've talked about a lot of times on this podcast but you really see it in action here is when you maintain that connection your lifelong energetic connection to the plant it's palpable yeah it's here for all to see and for those who are lucky enough to get it i've worked with a lot of different people and every time i'm trying to explain to them that this isn't just like the other farm you worked out where you're just we're working to, to grow weed, to cut weed, to sell weed. Like, I'm, this is like art to me. Like, I didn't want to kill these things. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I, you know, it's, it's a different thing, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people are so wrapped up in the numbers, you know? Investors, are, they yeah. want numbers. They want to know, you know, how much we're going to make this month. And that's great and all, but for me, it's just the process, you know? And I, the, love, and I love hearing success. you say that about the, the cutting of the, of the plants and how that, like, there's that, you know, there's that connection there. We don't, you almost feel bad when you're in, it's come to the end of its road and you, and you got to take it. You know, I'm stoked to be able to have people come up and be able to show them, you know, what, what we're doing here. Show yeah. them the, you know, the art of it all. I used so, to always have a good hey, ceremony with my plants. You guys probably mm -hmm. won't like this part, but most of this dirt, eight years old. I love I'm that all, part. I'm always love, adding though. We we're always adding part, when you yeah. pull root balls, but if this dirt's over eight years old. Man, we, we, we talk about the, you know, the structure of the soils that we're putting out there, they're designed for that. We yes. urge people to, oh, to reuse it. Adding new, adding a little bit of fresh. Definitely. Just get some of those, those organic. I get a few pallets of gold, and that's what we bump up all our stuff in. Never have a pro I mean, it's just amazing. It's, I mean, really, honestly. It, it was a goal in how we designed and created the products was that it does last longer. It maintains that loft and the functionality. And yeah, you want to add new organic matter no matter what style of growing you're doing. If you're layering, permaculture style whatever you're adding organic matter of some type every year and what do you guys think about it's like the carbon footprint here like all the fans and lights and all the stuff i got to do this yeah right exactly. there it is there's the light there yep. it is one light <laughs> yep. you know the one lighter in the sky and that's really and look at everything moving with the it's with, just with, dancing. Your, with your giant Loving fan it. that you have up exactly here. and so that's another thing that you know i really will take pride in there is just you know you aren't not tons of resources, not tons of power, you know, and it's and it, you could still have amazing product. You don't need all of that stuff. Certain times a year you do, you know, and it's and then sometimes it comes out way better, you know. See this year right there, there's some old. <laughs> I'll start picking it. But look, I'm not here. I'm down here into the evening, man. I, I look at every plant and I sit there and pick them all apart. But yeah, these are doing well. Well, and that's another reason why it's hard to have quality like this at a scale that's much larger because you can't have that connection to every bud and every plant once it gets past, a little past this point, right? Oh yeah, here's a funny one. So this here is, this is the grow off. We don't know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. You know the grow off. Sure. Yep. No idea. This is the skunk grow off. Literally the ugliest plant on my whole farm. I have wow. no idea what it is. <laughs> It was a plant, you know, you've heard of the skunk grow off their new one this year. Yeah. Some $200 plant. Like what the hell? It's the ugliest plant in the farm. I don't Does know it what have it is. any of those skunk terps? Where'd it come from? It's the grow off they're, one. Yeah, this they is don't the, even tell you anything. You just pick it up. They don't even tell you the, the I don't the, think, the I mean, or maybe it's Hendrix, but I don't know. I no, mean, it, it's not Hendrix. This came from original genetics from uh, Chris from Salmon so. Creek. And they talk all about it. Actually, we have an episode well, it doesn't where we like, talk. It doesn't like my farm. <laughs> it's like everything else, you know, around it. Like this one came out beautiful. This grow off here is, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm like, I'm not sure. And that one appears to be a winner. Think? What do you guys think it is? And that didn't do this one, right? This is around that Humboldt Sea Company didn't? I don't know. I believe that's correct. Yeah, I think somebody else What do you think it is? Because I, I mean, at first I was like, I it is know. close to the jelly donut, but it's not. A little more earthy. I mean, it's pretty nice. It is. That's great. I I have no idea. Okay, so before I walk you, watch. Don't, don't trip on the rocks. Nobody get hurt. Yep. I don't know how to, you guys will own this farm. <laughs> so like Not I have today. short ones. Like this, this oh, cool. one here came down. Obviously, this is, this is, this is short. for short this, people and kids to this work This is on, short right? people. This was a you know Johnny made took the lance and the zuki for me and made a cross, um, and. You know, I'm just trying it out, seeing what, what works. And the things is from Johnny's climate, 
or I wouldn't say climate, it's his son, he loses his son there quicker than me. And it seems like everything he's bred, it buds faster. So like I planted these, they start budding. I'm like, oh man. Those are some more of this chicken dinner right here. Let's see, I'll show you these. Really. I really it's, love the looks of this waist But you can see this high. is the Green Lantern in here. Okay. This is that, that tropical say ride times Green Lantern. And you can see the, the same kind of structure. It's more yeah. fruity. Especially in the calyxes, the hairs are a little different in structure, but just that bud and calyx. Yeah, yeah. It's the way it forms. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it could be a good one. I don't know. It's different, you know? I mean, it does. It is have, different. Like, different is good when it comes yeah. to weed nowadays, you it know? Is. For me, when I smell something that's different, I get excited. Yeah. You know, it's not like fruit, 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 fruit is cool, but then I get, you know, a different type of, this is one. This Chicken is one. dinner. Could this be. is almost got like winter, a winter, 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 aroma. winter. It could be. Could be. All right, I'm gonna block you over. You guys gotta see this candy lance now. Mm. And and like I said, all these, we even have white thorn rose going into, I got crossed uh, lance into white thorn rose this year. Woo. Here's That's candy exciting. lance, which is Skittles times lance. So yeah, you guys walk in there, give it a smell, check it out, man. This one here is, it's. Great name. Oh man, it's well. The candy lance. It's funny, yeah, because as people say, you better not call it. You're gonna get sued. I'm like, oh, candy lance. It's it's <laughs> skittles and lance. It is wow, for Rudy. And it expresses each of them. Oh yeah, no, very it's, well. Yeah, it, like it, it's got that skittles kind of sugary bite. Oh, man, I love that. Yeah, it's it's delicious, dude. It's definitely. This is your first year doing this one? No, second year. Second year. Yeah, second year on this one here. I mean, I wasn't even sure how many I was going to do, but. Okay, we're going to walk you guys up here to the, these are more runts, Ridgeline runts. This is your Ridgeline runts. Yeah, this, and that's what the ending, I'll show you guys there. These are all the behind. This is actually, so this is obviously behind that. There, there's some more of the Lanzilla and that's the regular Lance right there. And it's such a wide variety of turp profiles you're running to and that's always near and dear to my heart. I mean, the OG, like I was missing it. Yeah. I need, I need that. It's like, I like smoking it and tastes like royal gold dirt. Pure <laughs> fuel, <laughs> baby. The dirt tastes sweet. I don't know if that's an old school thing or not, but it's like, for I'm me, with you. When, you, when you smoke a joint, it's really earthy. That's oh, one yeah. of my favorites, you know? That's farming 101, man. Getting that, that smell of dirt up in your nose. You guys ready? Gotta come, come up to the to the Avenue of the Giants over here. This thing is, oh boy. I guess I did. I, I, I got to show you the 2019 winter. It, this is all the Ridgeline runs right here, which has just been a battle right now. It needs to go. It is done. You know, it's completely done. But I've just been waiting till on Saturday been fighting worms but i mean dude you gotta smell this stacks one. on cutting stacks. out constant you know the worms kind of nailed me this year but it is it's a good one like the caterpillar style worms yeah yeah, yeah just they dig holes right through yeah. crap mold so we're caught you'll see tops missing you know constantly in here see look at there's one right there look at this on camera you can see that one gnarly so this is farmers we're dealing with everything even these Dude, everything's hey, coming at you. <laughs> Pick these out. I mean, this is what it is. This is real farming. There's not, you know, this isn't inside. This is like you're fighting it to the end, you know, mm -hmm. every little bit. It's like, what are you going to do? But this is, again, it's your home. You're not out here spraying chemicals on this to try and no. keep these away. You're fighting the fight to bring the quality to the people, and that's the real. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, so you look for every little thing. I can't even sit here with you guys and look at these plants and not reach in and do stuff. <laughs> I feel you. Just the way it is. It's Been uh, there, totally get it. All these right. are, these Plant are people have though. that unique, like, inability to turn it off. I just love that. I love seeing, you know, it's taking the roofs off to me is such a special thing. It's like you feel the plants instantly just put their hands up. Right when you pull the roofs off, they're like, oh, thank you. All the humidity leaves, all the, the cucumber beetles that we have get eaten by the little birds. You know, it just all changes really quick. It's like all they're right. more actually interacting with the world around them. This, this thing is, 
This thing's going off. Oh, goodness. Yeah. This is, this is how I like, this is it. I mean, look at this sentinel guarding the <laughs> <Yeah>. door. <laughs> Security. What do you guys no think? joke. What do you guys think of these things? What the heck? Wow. Have a new with the Giants. That's I the like truth. It. Yeah, these are incredible, Jason. Yeah, this, this greenhouse right here is, I like it. This is exciting to me. I, this is, this is mm. what I get. Uh, Crack the code is what somebody told me on this one. I said, you know what? This For is real. a just. Wow. So this is I'm... Cheetah Piss. That's the name, right? Okay. And I got the strain a, a while back from the cookies group. And, you know, between all the strains, this one here I fell in love with. It, it loves this climate, obviously. No powder mold. It's like, the, it's the most resistant. You don't have to yeah. spray anything on it. It's just like a different leaf. So we are cro we cr across the lance into this this year. Um, it's not my favorite smoke. The smell is pretty amazing. It's really potent, as you can see. I mean, look at this thing. It's hard to get that real acrid kind of gnarly smell into flavor is something I've noticed over 100%, the years. 100%, you know? And so, like I said, I'm really... When I smoke a joint and it just tastes... I don't get much out of it. Yeah. You know, that to me, that's just, it's, that, that strain's getting tossed, you know? But this strain has given me a lot of love. And I mean, this, this greenhouse right here even blows my mind. It's not always the most flavorful, but it works too. I, I've it loved works. this cheetah piss for years. And it's, I mean, dude, look at, I mean, if you walk around and look at this corner, you look down there, this whole greenhouse is just like, I mean. It's stacked up. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of weed in here. There's a lot of weed. And, you know, so I could be the guy that just plants my whole farm like this. I probably would have killed it. Mm -hmm. People say you would have killed it. I would have killed it. And I knew this because I did this last year, the same thing. But, you know, that's just not what you got to do. You got to try different strains. I need different, you know, stuff for my jars. And I want a bunch of my own stuff. You well, know, that's what I'm focusing on this year is doing, or next year, I should say, is to have way more of my own strains. That's awesome to, like, want to, you know, want to kill it and want to give people what they want. But in the end, also you got to serve yourself in some way and grow what you want to grow. And that that's really nice. I see a lot of people in farms that are like, well, this is what the market wants. So this is what I'm growing. And I love that approach of like, this is what I want. So this is what I'm growing. Well, that's yeah. how you keep the passion going too. You know, oh, yeah. you're just going to burn out and be like, eh, I don't really like what I do anymore. You know? And like I said, for me, one of the coolest things that people think I just have acres and acres of weed. Ridgeline Farms is crazy huge and all this. And, you know, it's like, it's just small, simple and work hard and, and, you know, carry on the tradition, the family tradition. You know, this is what my, my family did. This is, you know, I've been doing this, passed it down to me. And now being able to, you know, bring my dad over here and he gets to meet, you know, Woody and, you know, David Crosby and all these people that he's, he's looked up to through weed you know it's like thanks weed yeah i mean hooking it up you know full circle and, you know you guys you know i didn't meet you guys unless it was for weed you know yeah and so i met so many good people I remember years ago you came up to our booth at their emerald cup right after you won and you were like i fucking use your shit i won <laughs> <laughs> yep you know it is that, that's the truth you know but it is it is pretty you know change is hard and you know this whole thing it's really took a toll on our community and it's brutal um to watch you know a lot of friends struggling but with change you know you have to adapt and good stuff does also come out of change you know and for me 100%. you know there's been a lot of amazing things and like i said you know ricky williams comes here he's enjoying it you know it's like i get a bunch of people here that actually now could see humble they hear about it and actually see what's here and you know we aren't murder mountain we aren't Aren't killers, tweakers, you know, there's plenty of them out there in the world, but like most people here in this community are just amazing. It's mm. funny that you say that. That's one of the things that kind of birthed the idea of doing this podcast is I travel all over for Royal Gold, doing sales, doing events, and everywhere I'd go for years, people would be like, Humble, Murder Mountain? And I'm like, no. And the owner of Royal Gold, Chad, was like, man, we gotta, we gotta change this narrative. Like, 
all over the country, all over Canada. Like this is what people think Humboldt is. And it's so not, this is what Humboldt is. It's family, Definitely. it's heritage, it's passion. Yep. And that shit's contagious. And it's really nice to get to be a part of this platform that allows folks like you to tell that story because you it's live important. the story. It's important. And, and I feel mm -hmm. like that's, you know, by getting all the love that I've received, which has been amazing, it's like, I feel like it's not really my job, but I definitely feel like I need to, you know, put out a humble name and let the, let the world know, you know, we are here, you know, our, and our weed is amazing. It's different. It's, we put so much love and passion into it and really, you know, partnering up with some of these people, you know, a lot of people disagreed, you know, with the cookies thing. Well, for me looking at it, it's like, people won't try our weed. We can't get on shelves. Like, a lot of these brands, it's impossible for us. You know, we don't have the money, we don't have the marketing, we can't just, the so bigger companies could get on there. So every once in a while you have to, you know, you, 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 it's, it's collaboration. Collaboration is really key in this market. And really everything I've done that has really succeeded has been collaboration. And, you know, and by, you know, even with, with them, all of a sudden I'm getting into other people's hands, which they smoke sun grown and all of a sudden they love it. And from that, they carry on to smoke another sun grown, you know? So it's definitely something that I take pride in. Um, you know, I definitely feel that I owe it to this community. You know, I, I grew up here and I bounced around to so many people's houses, you know, all the way up the west side, the east side. I was just that kid that just left home early and just lived with people. And, and everybody took care of me. Everybody treated me good. Everybody showed me the way, you know, and I had jobs and, and just, always got fed and you know and so it's like this community has always given to me now you know my kids brought up here and they get love from everybody and you know that's that's what this place is about you know it's like wouldn't trade it for anything definitely so amazing and it, like i said earlier you can it's tangible here the passion is real it's like you can't walk through this and not feel it just look at this thing just Dude. shining just like chunk on chunk. <laughs> I like, know. Look at those literally fist size <laughs> tops, it's, just like one right after the next. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know, it really is. And that's, like I said, this is the type of stuff that it still excites me. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it makes it fun, you know, and it works out. And like I said, we do have a big storm coming. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's definitely what, there's probably 40% white on some of these. But probably gonna have to take it on Saturday, you know, and that's that's just kind of the stuff you have to do around here. Again, it's farming. You, you, you're participating in the environment. You're not apart from it. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 tough. It's really tough. And I mean, round one we had every day was foggy of June except three days. You know, it was a so, hard spring. Yeah, so it's like, what are you gonna do? You could whine about it, or you could just cut the weed down, start over, plant, and do it again, you know? And you can so. drop chunk on it like this. Well, while you, you think you're cutting these early, I feel like they're going to do just fine for you. I mean, they <laughs> are. The thing is, just like anything, you see there's still white in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hate to say it, people love that purple. So yeah. you sit here through a few more cold days, you can see the purple creeping in. This bud's going to get more color. It's going to get, you know, it, yep. it, the key is to let it finish but not over finish and it's like you know it, if you cut a little earlier i don't know if you guys i'm sure you've noticed the high is different mm -hmm. yeah you know it's more of a you know it's more of a a jolt early morning cup of coffee when you let it go for a while you get you know you get all of a sudden they mushroom out and you get those kind of cloudy and amber you know crystals and it's like that's the stuff that really will sit you back you know that's more of it you get stoned you right know? so it's 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 cool. These, these plants will do so much different, you know, as you harvest them, you know, when you harvest them, they'll perform lots of different weed tricks in yeah. your mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's really well said. I like that. And again, it allows you to kind of shape the characteristics of what you're growing based on when you harvest and a little bit based on your environment. But, you know, again, you're beholden to the weather, like the storm's coming. Storm is coming, and this thing, I'm not going to risk this one. No. There's a lot of beauty in here, a lot of hard work, but this is all worth it right here. 
Yeah, get that out into the hands and hearts. Yeah. yeah. Good oh, little caterpillar friend. Yes, you know what you just did? You saved a bud, bro. That's right. Saved a bud. I mean, what are these? It's like, comes from a moth, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure of the exact species on it. There's like, some people have like tent worms and there's a I lot mean, of I'm not sure because like when you go up the hill, you could see like on the madrones, you'll see a bunch of, you know, like a spider webs looking. You'll see all these stuff. And I think, I can't, I don't know if they come from there. Or they're coming from just the tan oaks, but. I think that is them in the madrones, mm -hmm. the tent worms. They spiral out yep. like that. Yeah, it's, they're gross. They're gnarly, but you know, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, I really don't know how to how to get rid of them besides just pick them. Manual. Hours and hours of staring at your buds and just picking out every little every little Im, imperfection. <laughs> it, wow, it, and it's like you just get lost in your field of view, and then you turn to the left, and you're like, oh my god, it just keeps going, just stacks. I know. Oh, stacks. I'll walk out here and you could look look from that angle. It's kind of cool too. It's a good little shot. These are some of my favorite. Right when the sun gets low, these are some of my favorite plants to look at because that last sun just gets right on these and they just shine, man. They're definitely. They are meaty. I love this welcoming committee. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty, pretty hoop right here. The silence and here. I know I've had so many people. Why don't you do mixed light here? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I like silence. Yeah. I like, you know, it's, it's peaceful, on, man. It's just, you know, it's no energy. You know, there's fans here. They rarely run when it gets about 100, they have them turn on. But this is about as high tech as greenhouses we have right here. So you're made profitable. You know, yeah, exactly. All those little things. Kind of strange too, how these, I mean, really? Last year when I finished, everything was dark green and it was just amazing looking, but it didn't smoke that good to me last year. Okay. And as I was, you know, I'm learning the advanced organic line. They have so many things. And I've always been one to put in amendments. You know, I don't know how not to. And they didn't want me to do that. So anyways, I did put in amendments. I fed pretty heavy. It was, it was like this. It was beautiful, but it was all dark green. And, and when I started smoking the weed, it just wasn't my favorite. Wouldn't burn great. I mean, it was good. A lot of people love it, but I personally was like disappointed. And so now it's like I stopped. I haven't fed these things in uh, three weeks. And so now we're getting that fall color. You want mm -hmm. your plants to get this little yellow, little, you know, the purpling that's dying. I mean, yep. that's what it is, sure. finishing. They're fading and they're really just barely starting to fade, like just enough to, you know, have pulled through that nutrition and get that cleaner smoke, it looks like. Yeah. I hope something else, huh? Jesus. Wow. That's fucking gorgeous, man. I know, it is. It's, like I said, I did it. I did a bed of this round Shit two last stuff, year. Dude. And I, uh, I was like, all right, I'll do a whole hoop of it round two. I mean, the thing is it's still, it's, it sells. And you gotta have some weed that sells too. <laughs> I mean, it all sells, but it's like, that actually adds up like this, you know? I've seen yeah. a lot of greenhouses in my day, man. This is definitely one of the finest I've seen. It's a, it's a, for me, I appreciate that because I've kind of been feeling it too. I keep walking up here looking at it going, what the heck is this thing it's doing? It's pretty impressive. It just man. keeps going. The keeps consistency is staggering. Yeah. I mean, even looking at the chunks down low, I mean, they're all just so meaty everywhere. You know, we're getting down all the way a foot off the ground and they're still just and rock solid. Just amazing. Oh. Well, maybe we could, Beautiful. maybe we could eat this winter. <laughs> right, that's the hope. All right. Yeah, you know, like I said, it's just, it's just a nice little plot, nice and clean. This is absolutely incredible, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. We know how busy it is with kids and family and life, and especially with the storm coming. There's so much to do and it never stops on no, the farm. It doesn't, but like I said, it's it's I'm honored to have you guys here and you know, working with any especially humble locals that are helping spread the message and keep you know, keep the awareness and just get it out there, educating the consumers. I mean it's kind of our responsibility. You know, it is to the whole to really to all the Emerald Triangle, to all the craftsmen, you know. 
Mendo Dope Boys, yeah. you were just there, right? And it's like, it's just some amazing guys that have the same love and passion for what they do. And like, Absolutely. So all of us, you know, through weed, I met them, you know? And you're meeting all these people that have the same, you know, they, they grew up with weed. And so there's not really, there's not a Mendo, Humboldt, Trinity bullshit. Like we're all in this together right no now. No doubt. You know, we're all, we're all doing this together. We're, we're in the fight of survival of our culture and heritage, you know? Well, I wanna walk through this, I just could smell this one. This is. I'm glad, cause I didn't get to smell these earlier. This is the yeah, lemon. So all, yeah, come in here, giving these deep in here and just, this is, oh my gosh. Something about this thing is just like, dessert oh my goodness yeah so this is i forget the breeder's name on this one but man this is craft cannabis at its finest i love the slight pink hue to the pistols it really just gives it that i don't know it's just it's kind it's stunning it's got that nice kind of lighter green it's clearly healthy it's <sighs> just the way it expresses you know it's it's yeah i mean we've I've fought stuff here. We've had aphids, we've had different things. We've been fighting here. It's like, you just gotta learn, you know, you gotta learn how to fight the diseases, you know, and bugs and everything that come with, you know. I mean, all of a sudden we have, we never had aphids a few years ago. No, you know? for 20 years leading never, up. Never had them, right? And all of a sudden with all these new strains coming, we have all these viruses coming in. It's a, it's a real, it really actually makes it make more sense to grow your own to to start your own seeds to make your own crosses because you know they're just you know they don't have viruses <laughs> when you when you make these genetics so that's another kind of special thing with doing that you know and like i said the craziest thing is seeing what they're going to do they're always different every plant is different from one seed or one bud all the seeds in that bud you're going to get multiple variations and it's spectacular to me you know it just highlights, oh, yeah. like you said, the importance of breeding for your environment, for your conditions, and oh. keeping fresh genetics instead of see, recycling yeah. over and over. Yeah, I can see how it really leaves here with the brown nose. Yep. <laughs> Easy to do. I know, I know, it really is. It really it, is. It's also really impressive how much work goes into the pheno hunting to get it down to this point. You know, people do not realize that if you aren't a breeder, or you've never tried it, it takes. I mean, you literally have to, like for me, I do it the, basically the old school way, right? We're gonna sex the plant. Usually I'll, I'll in the winter, I'll kind of cut the hours down, make the plant, you know, show what it is, which, you know, now yeah. people buy kits. Right. You know, which I haven't experienced yet. Sounds amazing because this is a hard thing because once you do that, the plant's going into bud, find out what one's a female, take clones off it or try and re-veg it well like, that you are so you take clones off it and then you're going to re you know then you got to get those clones re-veg those clones keep them over here while you grow it out and you spend you know a few months growing it out and then you don't like it yep and you throw it out and you start over or you love it i mean it's just kind of the game you know and, and you may love it but not have had as many take and then you're like on the precipice of even being able to capture the thing you'd already put years into at this point yep, yep. and it's so fleeting it's a lot of work and it really is and you know lots of times people are like hey can i get lance and for me i really want my friends to do well so it's like you know yeah sure you guys could have it and it just goes out into the open right and that's it's fine because they know yeah. it's from me, but it, but what the thing that they don't understand is it is what well, some do. I'm not saying all. It's it's four years, and not only four years. When I'm pheno hunting, I'm I'm using. I wouldn't say wasting, but I'm using lots of my square footage, and it's not always good. You know, I have a lot of sections of crap that all of a sudden, you know, it's not worth anything. So coming out with the strain, not only it takes years, but it, it's a lot of money that you pretty much will lose by, you know, I could do it all cheetah piss, this whole farm right here, I'd probably grow triple the amount of weight. Yeah, and it'd you know? just be chunks everywhere you look. Everywhere you look. But but you wouldn't have this moment of no. like, that lemon I mean, you think this is dessert just erupting this is five in your weeks, face. Right, five weeks. So what it's, this is gonna do, it's gonna probably get pretty big. Same with this, this strain here right now, it's, it's like this, right? It, when I first grew up, I'm like, oh my God, is it gonna do much? And at the end, this thing turns into the most spectacular 
chunky bud ever. Like it changes so much, you know? So sometimes you gotta grow them all the way out before you get discouraged. Right, so, yeah. and yeah. you know, you say four years into this to create the lance and it's like, well, yeah, but there was a decade before that of narrowing down what you wanted to breed for and finding the genetics that fit the program to even start that four year process. It's, it's a lifetime, man. And I, oh, yeah. hats off to you and yeah. all the other people that put that soul work in to I'm do this. Kind because, of a no brainer when you have two that win Emerald Cup, you know, people love, Yeah. you know, and so put them together. Look at these things. No, right? The breeze, a, they're just. Yeah, full on dust devils. Weather's changing, you guys. Winter's coming. Storms, storms Win, coming. Winter's coming. I know. You can see all the ladies dancing, going, mm -hmm. this is great right now. But yeah, we got to literally put covers. It's painful putting covers on these things and closing them down. And no, I hate that. Then you're fighting the humidity and Humidity, all of these other and we got to beat up all the plants on the side. And it's just like, oh my gosh. So I really enjoy this. Right now, this is good as it gets for me is just seeing these things happy and outside and doing their thing you know yeah this is like, like i said right when i pull the covers off it's always a feeling of just like you see the plants literally yep. leaves go up in the air like thank you <clears throat> thank you you know when you get all the fresh air and thank i mean the, the sun's a little hotter these days so sometimes you got to shade cloth it at the end which we used to never have to do right. either you know yeah. Because sometimes that sun will just bake these things if, without the plastic on. So, you know, we're changing. We're changing. The climate's changing. There was time I'd do three runs here. Yeah. Now it's like hard to do two. Yep. Wow. So we're you know we always have to change. You know, with the climate, you always have to be watching the weather. You know, you're always looking for the strains for that climate. It's yep. it's a well, and this is such one. a unique location. Like the name says it all, Ridgeline you are on the ridge that you can feel that wind that comes down from the ocean over the first range through the valley and pushes across oh, you yeah. can feel it in the air you know and you're not that far from the ocean as the crow flies right no not at all it's about no driving it's 45 minutes so yeah, yeah. it's probably yeah. just a few miles oh yeah oh yeah yeah it's beautiful i was thinking a, uh, i could walk you guys down the little park area if you want to check it out Wanna peek at a little area down here real quick? Yeah. Check this out. So you guys like horseshoes and stuff, so I show you where we have little parties and get togethers and stuff like that, you know. So this place is special and then what the one of the coolest things was my friend who um he ended up buying this other property and this was all kind of just you know, it was just thick beat up area and we just kind of together we worked and we turned it into Full on park, you know. We got volleyball down <laughs> here. It. Hell yeah. It's a little end of the summer beat up, but throughout the summer it's just green grass. We have mushrooms and frisbee, you know, in the night, light up Wonderful. frisbees. We That's have that wiffle, good life. wiffle balls and we have horseshoe pits in the corners and yeah, it's a cool little zone. You can see something that Rob and Crow built. I'll show you this, it's really kind of cool. Wow, what an amazing flat in here. Oh, like natural is, flat. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty special. I'll tell you that. Man, you can feel this change so much in the air. Really? So yeah, yeah that kinda, just it flipped like a switch just now. Oh yeah. That's, All right. That's what's going on. It'll get cold here. Last night it got cold. So Rob and Crow built this together. You know, oh, he built me a little outhouse over there. So you got a little outhouse in the corner. Oh, that's beautiful. Then we have Bruce, dude. my stepdad, did the fish on the top, you know, and it's the pond's obviously low. The water was all the way up to this thing this winter. No shit. All the way up wow. to here. Oh yeah. It's never really been the same lately, so it's kinda I don't know. After those droughts, I don't know if it's from using water or what or earthquakes or some cracks in the side but it, it's drained faster than ever but yeah come check out this one in here this is this is it's pretty cool just having you know something that my dad and uncle did together for, for us using some nice redwood and nice little area oh this is awesome bro yeah Beautiful. that's cool huh we had dj booths in here right you got some djs going in here oh, and nice you know, I got. Damn, this is sick, Jason. It's a cool. So it's nice. a nice spot, and I mean, 
if if you stand right over here, you can look right through, and all you see is King's Peak at night. It's the craziest Dang. thing. Like standing right over there, it's just literally King's Peak. So wow, yeah, it's a, it's a cool spot. Man. This craftsmanship is incredible too. I know, right? Like I told you, my family are amazing craftsmen. Like all of them, my mom, my dad, my uncles. They're like, I never had it. Yeah, I mean the amount of things that they built behind the store. It's a whole little, they do. It's a little village. That's what back they do, they love days. it. You yeah. Know? And I was kind of like, what the heck? Why do I know how to do all that stuff, <laughs> right? But I, I could build a bed, fill it with dirt, and, and you know, grow. But yeah, no, I've definitely. So Ooh. how long has your family been in this area? Um. Well, I mean, they were they moved to Willits. I can't even see because of, man, it's well, Rob smoky. told us that one time he came in, I think, want to say like 1970, right? 71 yeah, or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah, something like Willis. Rich, Will, Michigan. Uh, yeah, Willis was somewhere in there. And then they moved to Oregon. And from Oregon, they were, here, I think, so they moved here when I was two or three. I'm 44 now, so, yeah. Okay. About right 40 on. years on the hill, probably. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't know where time went. It goes fast. It goes real fast. Especially you know? when you're doing what you love. Rick's going to choke on an apple. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the Ridgeline Farms, Rick choked on an apple. It was, it was so good I had to keep eating it. But every time I look over at Manuel, and Manny's like, dude, stop eating the apple. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your producer, Rick. Oh, yeah, so, so some of you guys come play some volleyball, man. Let's, you know, it's yes. so fun. It's like, I love it. We get, we get a bunch of... My kids and their friends come down here. And I bet. Us That's elders it. have to show them up. Yeah. Which we did. Horseshoes. Hey, we did show them up, but most of us couldn't get out of bed the next I day. I bet. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Sounds about right. Leaving pain. it all on the court. Yep. I did, a, I did. I was paddle boarding on Shasta Lake this last weekend. and Yeah, the next day. I was like, yeah, I did great. And the next day I was barely able to move. Oh, no. <laughs> Hurt yourself? No, just like that. You know, just that using of the muscles. Are, of course. I mean, you're keeping, yeah, keeping your balance, man. My legs. Oh, my, yeah. Your core. My abs. I was like, wow. Yeah. Very stiff. Use it or lose it, my friend. Yep. That's that deal. Yeah. I guess, so this was, this whole place was, uh, you know, this is sawmill. Look right here. There's That's like an old, from the old sawmill right there, you know. Never got rid of it just because it's kind of cool. It's like. Oh, it? wow. So this. This site was the actual mill. This was the, yeah, this was Salma. This was a, on the thing they have it as like a gravel pit was it this, but yeah, this is where, this is where it was really this whole area. So, I mean, you look at these old trees they cut, these big monster firs mm -hmm. and stuff all the way through here, everywhere around here is this big monster. That's kind of why I grew, grew up like this because they cut all these trees and then all that young stuff mm -hmm. just grew up and spend a life trying to clean the forest like this. Just like my dad now, walk around, joint in my mouth into the uh. evening, <laughs> cutting wood. And you know, it's, I enjoy it though. I mean, it feels like a state park. It feels, right. you can feel the care and love that goes into the parcel, not just the cannabis, but the entire property. I know. Can you get me, we need to get a, a Ridgeline, well, a gold banner going here. Look at this. Oh man. That just officially made the to-do list. Yep. Uh, we have to. I know you got the fed dirt, got me a plant therapy. They hook me up constantly with all their plant therapy. They're doing so good. Another Humboldt company that's thriving. Yeah. You know, so. A fantastic job of getting out there. I know. That's pretty cool. Overnight I, success story. I think it's another great example of they put 15, 20 years into creating that product and honing it and perfecting it. And everybody's like, they became an overnight success. Totally. Well, yeah, but it Dude, was they 15 are, years to get there. They are an amazing family. And that stuff is, I mean, almost like, smells like mouthwash. It smells so good. And when you're spraying, I don't care if you have masks or not, because I've growing up around spraying everything, we had no idea, right? Yeah. I mean, I was dipping plants in poison with no mask. I didn't mm -hmm. know. No, no so, gloves. You know, it's just like good. spraying something that actually, hey, one of you guys' cards. Spraying something that smells good. Me again. You'll Rick. smell it through the mask and it doesn't hurt you or That's kill you or nothing. <laughs> Dude, we're losing, Rick. You guys, don't trip on this. 
Don't go down. Well, that's about the tour of this old farm, huh? This has been just so amazing, heartwarming. Walk the line. So nice to see and nice to feel your passion. And again, I can't thank you enough for giving us the opportunity to come up and share it with you and to help share it with the world. And hopefully people can take something away from this and better their situation. And I think if they could take anything, it'd be less is more. Yeah. Quality over quantity. We say that in a way of like, you know, it's, it's real. It's like, it's a proven fact, you know? Grow endless fields of crappy weed, mm -hmm. flood the market, you know? Don't pay workers what they deserve. And go bankrupt. Go bankrupt, you know? And it's like, or you could do less, less people work hard. If everyone did that and everyone grew farms like this with high quality, and we'd be killing it. Oh, Prices yeah. would be up. Absolutely. Wouldn't be one person that has acres and acres that's, you know, just struggling, trying to make it, dropping the price single-handedly. And as much as everyone would win, the person that would win the most is the consumer. You're, you nailed it. You nailed mm -hmm. it, you know. And that is, it's like, like I said, you just got, all I have to do is get my product into their hands. Totally. And once they smoke it, oh, wait, what? What is this? This is indoor, right? No, it's not. Yep. You know, in their heads, indoor is like diamonds, right? Oh, yeah. Outdoor is like maybe silver. I mean, that's just, I think, what people's perspective is. And, you know, indoor does look beautiful and it is good. And I'm not, I don't even, I'm not bashing it. I'm just saying this is a different experience. The well, it's about the different. education. You, know, you think about like just the, the production tomato in the supermarket. You know, they've narrowed it down to just a small handful of actual varieties of tomatoes out of the 1600 that they started off with because it's the prettiest on the shelf at the supermarket. Yeah. A lot of people have just been trained to not want those crevices and those open cracks and, and you know, a wormhole in their apple. You know, they want that stuff that just looks pretty, even though the taste of the heirloom is going to be 100%. phenomenal. 100%. Right. So it's just about changing that perspective and re educating them. Yeah. It's well, not just about image. And you know, obviously, you guys is dirt. You guys, Thanks, you guys I mean, you guys are the root of, of a lot of this, right? I appreciate that. I mean, we, we, we definitely do. So we, that, that's, that's something that you guys got to take pride in as well. We do. You know, 100%. It's like our stuff has to test, test good. That's you guys right. give us a bad batch. We're screwed, you're gonna you be, know? You're, you're going you to be you, calling, you, you, calling you, me up, yelling at me. Yeah, right? <laughs> and it's like we have all the fursariums and all, you know, all this mm -hmm. stuff, all that type of stuff nowadays. And you get some bad soil and you get that in your soil, you're screwed. And that's not even, you know, touching on the heavy metals and everything else that totally. you know, Prop 65 totally. in California hits on. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know, good on you guys just by, you know, supplying us with some good, clean soil. Like I said, I could literally take a clone, put it right in it. And it grows. I don't add amendments. I don't put any microrhizin, nothing. No. I just put it in the dirt. And, totally. You know, give it some light, give it some sun, whatever it needs, and it, it's good to go. Some water. The growers have enough stacked up against them to deal with. The last thing that they need to do is worry bad about dirt, the first few weeks of their will, soil. Uh, what really will destroy you. Mm -hmm. Well, and what Chad, from the owner of Royal Gold, always says is it's the team. Every single person at the factory at Royal Gold, the quality control team, the people who are breaking down the pallets, everybody has that same passion and is looking at every little thing in that same way that you are here with what you're doing. You see one little thing out of place and you're like, I have to fix that now. And there's 60 people at the Royal Gold Factory wow, really? who all take that approach at every single day. So I feel personally so blessed to be a part of that team. That's and you know, it's a culture and it comes from this connection to this side of the community. So that's you know. awesome. You know, it makes me even happier to use your guys' dirt knowing it's like that is you guys got a family going there, you know, thank Taking you. Taking pride in what you do. Yeah. You know, and that's what it, you know, you got to take pride in what you do. If that's, if that's what you do for a living and you know, just if you're ever up that way, man, give us a call. One of us will run you out there and show you. Oh, around. I'll be up that way. Make sure it's a lot of it. people get there and they're like, "Wow, this is a fucking dirt factory." I never expected it to look like this. And yeah. To be so clean and to be so organized. It's very much like your your spot here. It's clean. It's organized. It's functional. Like that's how we've we've put our spot we'll together. Come up there, the dump trailer. 
Let's do it. <laughs> there you go. Right well, on you guys. Once again, thank you so much, Jason, Definitely. for all the time all the and the energy. Definitely appreciate it, man. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. up here, huh? No, man, that's fucking awesome. Tell and Rick. We've been friends for a while, and I've right. definitely known from from you know everything that I've ever heard about you and what you do up here to see it with my own eyes and to walk the property with you. Yeah. It's really, really just puts it all together, man. In the first day job. of fall. Yeah, I know, man. How freaking <laughs> serendipitous. I love it. All right, on. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, again. Thanks for tuning in to Royal Grown Radio. I'm Michael Beck. I'm Rick Elliott. And we're joined once again, Jason from Ridgeline Farms. Get you some as soon as you can. Cheers. This is Jason with Ridgeline Farms, and you're listening to Royal Grown Radio. You can find me at uh, Ridgeline Farms on Instagram or ridgelinefarms.com. <laughs>